Uh, my name is Stephanie Davis, and my research focuses on a bacterial protein called SMTA, and we're looking at its function in a bacterial infection. So SMTA is a type of metallothionine. It gets its name from its ability to bind metals. Um, and most of the research done on SMTA has actually been done with its ability to bind metals, but we know that mammalian metallothionines actually have a lot of other functions, especially in the immune system. So one thing that mammalian metallothionines can do is they can also bind heavy metals, like zinc, which we know is important to immune function. They can also um, cause chemotaxis of our white blood cells, so they can cause our white blood cells to move along in a certain direction according to a gradient. And finally, what we know that mammalian metallothionines can do is they combine reactive oxygen species and neutralize them and protect our cells from them. So our own cells actually produce reactive oxygen species for a variety of reasons, and, um, but they're also harmful. So that's a protective effect of the metallothionines. As far as SMTA, none of these other effects have really been studied, so that's where my research looks at. And specifically, I'm looking at SMTA's ability to bind reactive oxygen species and whether or not it can neutralize them, and specifically protect the bacteria during infection. So we know that during infection, our white blood cells will release reactive oxygen species to kill the bacteria. Um, so what we were looking at is if we put SMTA into E. coli, will the E. coli be able to survive infection or survive oxidative stress? So the first thing we did here, um, was we transfected E. coli with an SMTA gene. So what that means is we kind of just put the gene in the E. coli so it can express the SMTA protein itself. And then we also had a group of E. coli that can't express the SMTA protein. So we're able to compare the two different strains of E. coli. Um, so the first thing we wanted to do was treat our two different strains of bacteria, the ones expressing SMTA and the ones not expressing SMTA, with hydrogen peroxide, which is a source of oxidative stress. So here that's what we did. The red lines indicate the bacteria that express SMTA and the blue lines are the bacteria that did not express SMTA. And the different lines are just different concentrations of hydrogen peroxide that we used. And you can see that at every concentration of hydrogen peroxide, the bacteria expressing SMTA, so these red lines, actually did a lot better. So this is just percent of viability, so these bacteria survived a lot better than these ones. And we can conclude that that's due to the presence of SMTA. The next thing that we wanted to do was infect macrophages with our two different strains of bacteria. So over here, that's what we did. Macrophages are a type of white blood cell. They're actually our first line of defense when we have an infection, and they're known to secrete reactive oxygen species when they come in contact with bacteria. So again, the red lines are the bacteria expressing SMTA, and the blue here are the bacteria that do not express SMTA. What we did was we infected for either 30 minutes or 24 hours, and we recovered the bacteria that had survived, and that's what you see here, just surviving bacteria. And you can see that more SMTA-expressing bacteria survived than bacteria that were SMTA-deficient. So from that, also we can conclude that SMTA is somehow providing a protective benefit to these bacteria during infection. So some future directions where we'd like to take this research is to continue looking at its ability to bind and neutralize reactive oxygen species, but also look at some of the other properties of mammalian metallothionines, like its ability to cause chemotaxis. Um, in addition, we'd also like to see if SMTA is secreted from bacterial cells because as of right now, nobody's really looked at that yet. And kind of a big picture why this is really important, SMTA is it's expressed in some forms of cyanobacteria, but more importantly, it's expressed in pseudomonas. And we know that pseudomonas infections cause a huge problem for patients with cystic fibrosis. And so we think that, you know, maybe do this research could actually help with treatment or therapies in cystic fibrosis eventually. So that's kind of the big picture why we're doing this research. Okay, thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about how private giving has helped you do the research? Sure. So I've actually done this research for two summers. I'm a senior now, so I did it this summer between my sophomore and junior and also junior and senior year. And I wouldn't have been able to do the research without the funding that I got during those two summers from the SURF grant. Um, I mean, it provided a stipend. It provided a way for me to live on campus. And um, so, yeah, if I didn't have the research, you know, that's, I think, six, seven months of research that I couldn't have done. So it really helped out with just having the time to get this research done and take classes and do all the other undergraduate things that I have to do.